The rivalry between Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk is heating up again, this time over satellite internet. Project Kuiper is Amazon's plan to deliver internet from space using 3,236 small satellites in low Earth orbit. In many ways, it's a response and a competition to Elon Musk and SpaceX with its Starlink network. Amazon is known as the everything company, and it's hard to have an everything company without internet. So Amazon's fastest growing segment has been its AWS cloud service, and in support of that, they've built out a tremendous amount of internet infrastructure, whether it's data centers or fiber, Space is actually a very natural expansion of one, their data business, and two, their consumer business, providing goods and electronics and resources to people around the world. SpaceX's Starlink already has about 2,000 satellites in orbit, serving about 250,000 total subscribers. But the FCC has approved SpaceX to launch a total of 12,000 satellites. Amazon has yet to launch any. Amazon first revealed Project Kuiper in 2019, but in early April, a big announcement cemented the project's momentum. Amazon recently signed a multi-billion dollar contract in what is the largest rocket deal in the commercial space industry's history for launches of its Kuiper satellites with three different entities. Blue Origin, Jeff Bezos' space company, United Launch Alliance, which is the joint venture of Boeing and Lockheed Martin, and Ariane Spas, which is the European rocket maker. The question now is, can the e-commerce giant catch up to SpaceX? It is true that SpaceX has a first mover advantage and has more satellites launched than Amazon. The advantage that Amazon has is they have the chance to learn from Starlink's mistakes. Amazon's project Kuiper is named for the outermost asteroid belt in our solar system. Amazon wants to launch its satellites into low Earth orbit at about 360 to 390 miles above the Earth's surface, an orbit similar to where SpaceX has its satellites. The basis for all satellite internet networks involves three components, a satellite dish, a ground station, and the satellites themselves. The goal is to provide connectivity to remote parts of the planet, not served by traditional internet options like cable and DSL. Amazon has been fairly tight-lipped about the design of its satellites. However, they have stated that these satellites will be much bigger than those being launched by SpaceX. The difference or the reason for this is Amazon needs spacecraft that are going to be much more powerful because they're going to have fewer spacecraft in the orbit that they chose. And in order to deliver a powerful signal to the antenna or user terminal on the ground, the spacecraft has to do all the work. In April, CNBC's Andrew Ross Sorkin got an exclusive first tour inside Amazon's Project Kuiper facility in Redmond, Washington. The two buildings that are here in Redmond, one is focused mostly on R&D to create Kuiper space satellites and base stations and uh, customer terminals, the satellite dishes you'll put in your house. And then the room we're in here is going to be the manufacturing line, uh, at least the first of the manufacturing lines for the actual Kuiper satellites themselves. An estimated 37% of the world's population has still never used the internet, with 96% of those individuals living in developing countries. Many people, we grew up with connectivity over modems and things like that. That all ran over copper that was subsidized here in the U.S. in the 40s and 50s and 60s. And nobody's upgrading that in rural America. And nobody's upgrading that in sub-Saharan Africa. And so what's happening is people are leapfrogging to mobile, but it's leaving this gap in the homes. And Kuiper, if successful, is about bridging that. The Satellite communications market is one that's valued at a few tens of billions of dollars. It's not uncommon for tech giants to support digital infrastructure, satellite internet being one of those. Facebook invested in a satellite project or purchased capacity on a satellite that unfortunately blew up, but they spent considerable money looking at space as a way to extend their own service, to bring more people onto Facebook. And Google has financed Fibers as well to bring more people online for their service. So what Amazon is doing is part of a continued trend of tech giants building out infrastructure that can ultimately support their own core services, which for Amazon would be e-commerce. Although the payout may be huge, 
building out such large satellite internet networks is very expensive. Both SpaceX and Amazon have said that they expect to spend over $10 billion to develop their respective constellations. For almost any other company, that would be a mammoth hurdle to get over. But Amazon spent roughly $60 billion on capital expenditures in 2021 alone. So compared to the average company, this is a cost Amazon could actually get its arms around, and it doesn't threaten capsizing the program provided they can keep it within that cost estimate. Trying to build this kind of global satellite internet network is much less of an existential threat to the existence of the business of Amazon versus the business of SpaceX because Amazon does so many other things. Whereas for SpaceX, this is their largest other project alongside its building its Starship rocket. SpaceX charges $110 per month for its baseline internet service, and customers have to pay $599 for a Starlink satellite dish. Amazon has not yet revealed how much its internet service will cost, but Kuiper will follow a similar business model, with customers paying for a subscription and a satellite dish. Amazon recently disclosed that its Kuiper satellite antennas, which consumers would use here on the ground, are under a cost of $500 a piece. By comparison, SpaceX, which has been selling its Starlink hardware for about $600 a piece, has disclosed last year that it cost the company around $1,300 for each of its antenna, meaning that it's subsidizing roughly half of the price of those Starlink hardware to deliver the service to customers on the ground. Several constellations, Starlink not being the exception, have tried first with the spacecraft in hopes that they would solve the antenna later. And what ultimately results from this, or what has resulted in the past, is the antenna has remained too costly for the service to ever be truly widespread. Another area where Amazon has a head start is its AWS ground station infrastructure. The biggest advantage for Amazon is that they can link their constellation directly back to the internet using their own infrastructure. So if you have a, an Amazon Kuiper terminal on your house, it's gonna link to the satellite and then it needs to link back to the internet somewhere else. For Starlink, they have to set up those gateways back to the internet using other service providers, either other cloud network service providers or find ways to stitch Starlink back into the internet. One of those service providers is Google. In 2021, SpaceX signed a deal that allows the company to install ground stations at Google data centers around the world. AWS has a network backbone. It's close to the internet. Lots of people are hosting on it. So if we can interconnect our base stations to that AWS network, we're automatically advantaged in that case to, for customers to get better bandwidth. Billing is something that we do a lot and we're riding on the shoulders of all that billing infrastructure. Manufacturing is a big, hard component of this. You know, we have to build, over time, tens of millions of customer terminals. But in the device business, we build tens of millions of things every month. And so it gives us the opportunity to use the, the expertise of that design and manufacturing and bring it over here. Even with its deep pockets and extensive experience producing consumer electronic devices at scale, Amazon still faces a number of challenges in making its satellite internet a reality. One of the biggest hurdles to getting such a network up and running, especially when we're talking about this number of satellites, is getting them into orbit. To get its constellation into space, Amazon has contracts for 38 launches with United Launch Alliance, 18 launches with Ariane Spas, and 12 launches with Blue Origin, with an option for as many as 15 additional launches with the private venture that's owned by Amazon founder Jeff Bezos. Each of the rockets that Amazon is relying on to launch Kuiper are at least two years behind schedule. And on top of that, the challenge most new rockets face is not just getting to the launch pad for the first time, but scaling to launch two, three, five, ten times a year. Our research shows that for the first five years of a rocket's existence, the average flight rate is around 2.75, meaning they struggle to launch just three times a year during their early years. And time is not necessarily on Amazon's side. 
So Amazon's self-stated biggest driver is to meet regulatory milestones set by the U.S. Federal Communications Commission. That body requires Amazon to have half of its constellation in orbit by July 2026 and the full constellation by July 2029. If, say, they only launched 1,000 satellites by that time, their authorization would be capped at 1,000 satellites, at the number that they launched by the time of the deadline. Amazon's never put anything into space, so like that's the first challenge, which is we have to get a couple prototype satellites up uh, and you know and test them. Everything simulates really well, and, you, and it's coming together really well. We've built a great team, but until you're putting something in space, it's just not a friendly environment. Amazon plans to launch two prototypes into orbit by the end of this year before beginning to launch operational satellites. Apart from SpaceX, Amazon will have to contend with other players in the internet satellite business, including OneWeb and more traditional satellite providers like Viasat and Hughes. The good news for Amazon is that many experts don't think satellite internet is a winner-take-all business. No one in this industry believes that it's a one-system-take-all kind of environment. We expect to see at least two and probably more constellations go forward serving not only the residential consumer, but any type of business or organization that relies on internet connectivity. It's ambitious. It's also, you know, something that uh, five people in a garage can't do. You know, so if we are going to do good things for society, this is something that because Amazon does have scale, we do have a balance sheet that this is the kind of initiative, even though it's risky, it could fail. It's the kind of initiative that we can and should take on.